Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to share Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 12 to 15. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That was verse 16. Now, sometimes when we're going through, we don't realize just how the word, God's word, can be a lamp under our feet, but it can also be a lamp unto our soul. Have you ever put on an outfit from the closet and you getting ready to step out and you stand in the mirror for one last look and the sunlight's beaming through the room? Now you're going by room light, but now the sunlight is, is catching your outfit. And you happen to look and you're like, wait a minute. And you start seeing stains, and yeah. You're like, did I wear this before? Okay. Or maybe the washing machine didn't get out the stains like you thought they did. Because now it's under that bright sunlight. All of the flaws begin to show. That is what happens with us when we get under the light of God's word. He begins to expose the secret intentions of our hearts. He begins to show the areas of our spirits that are not really that clean or sincere. Now, it's not made for condemnation. If you see the outfit is not as clean as you thought, what do you do? You take it off the hanger, you throw it in the washing machine with the rest of the clothes, and you wash it once again. Well, every day on a daily basis, we are to wash once again because our spirits always need a new refreshing. Our spirits always need a cleansing. Our hearts do, our minds, everything. So don't be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't be in, intimidated by the flaws that you see. Have hope in God's ability to cleanse. Okay, now moving to the next thing it talks about. You know that the word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul, spirit, and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you things you don't even know about yourself. Mm-hmm. I remember when the Lord spoke to me at church one night and told me I was jealous. I was shocked. I, I'm jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. Oh, you jealous. Check out your thought process. This is what you thought yesterday. This is what you thought the day before. Is it not? Ah, uh, yeah, it is. Uh-huh. I was shocked. I was shocked to tears. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. And I apologized to the woman to the woman whose voice I was jealous of. So God will do that. He will let you know if you got if your slip is hanging. He'll let you know if your pants have a tear, if your zipper's down, 
you know, if you forgot to put the odor on, God will let you know because he is a discerner. I mean, he discerns nothing gets past the light of his countenance, nothing. So you don't have to worry about, is God going to leave you the same? He's going to clean you up. You know how kids are, they don't want to be washed behind the ears. They, they just want to get it over with. No, 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 no. You stay here till I clean you up. Well, that's what God does. Whether we like it or not, whether we like the process or not, he's going to clean us up. Oh, yes, he is. He's going to get rid of that stink one way or another. <laughs> okay, now listen. It says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. So basically, nothing is hidden from God. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So we're connected to him, and he's the one that can see all. So there's no hiding. There's no slipping and sliding. There's no getting around. No. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Okay, now, but this is the thing I love about God. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Now, the reason that I love that about him is if you have a temperament issue and you get upset over little itsy bitsy things, if you are willing and humble enough to ask God why, oh, he's liable to tell you. Like he told me one time in one word, rage. Rage? I got rage? Yeah, you may not know it. Ask the one who does. Ask God. He sees, he knows all. Nothing that is not naked before his sight. Nothing gets past him. Gets past you, gets past me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing gets past God. We can even go for the okie doke of the lies we tell ourselves. That doesn't get past God. He'll say, cut, cut, bat, 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 bat. Get back over here. Now I know you, you're not thinking I'm going to go for it. But I'm not going to let you go for it either. I'm going to tell you the truth about yourself. That's God's love. All right. Here's another thing. This is what I love about God. After he tells you the truth about yourself, he'll also show you why. Why you are tripping the way you trip. Why? Someone made you feel insecure there. Someone said something. Do you remember Car Karen Carpenter? Yeah, some of you know, some of you are too young to remember. Anyway, yeah, I know I'm dating myself. Karen Carpenter had the most beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. She was pretty to boot. And do you know, Karen Carpenter with a slender, skinny self thought she was fat. Do you know why? Because someone in an article referred to her as chubby. There was nothing chubby about that girl. She bought the lie. She ingested that thing all down in her spirit. Like some of you do when people call you stupid. When people call you slow. When people treat you like there's something kind of quirky and wrong about you. It's, oh, you special girl. Oh, you need help. You know, and you start thinking, oh, I must be really weird. Something's wrong. What's wrong with me? You know, you go through your life trying to adjust, overcompensate, apologize, make up for all of your shortcomings. One person has an issue with you, and you want to just repaint your whole, your whole person for somebody that doesn't even count with an opinion. They don't even know you, but they got an opinion. Well, let me tell you, God knows why you do what you do. He knows why you make these adjustments, why you are an overachiever trying to impress daddy, 
while you are an overachiever trying to win the love and admiration of mommy. Why you push so hard and why you have no mercy because no mercy was shown to you and you figure if I made it as high as I did not getting mercy, then that means I should show no mercy. You're going by man. You're going by the imperfections of other people and their mistreatment of you rather than going by the love of God and his understanding. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? Because he was tempted like we were, yet without sin. So what that says to you, now after I said all that, here's the punchline. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You need love. You need validation. You need a self-esteem. You need the hurts to be removed. You need to get rid of the shame. That's the answer right there. God. You know how the song goes? Jesus is the answer for the world today. I am telling you, he is the answer to your insecurities. He is the answer to your fears. He is the answer to your anger. He's the answer to your emotional scars. He's the answer to your frayed nerves. He's the answer to your weaknesses. The list goes on. You come up with one, he's the answer. But you have to start asking. The Bible simply says, we have not. Because we ask not. Ask. It's yours for the taking. It's not welfare. It's God's love. He wants to answer more than you want to ask. You want to stop feeling insecure? You want to stop feeling ashamed of what they did to you? I can run my mouth all night on this subject because inner healing is my baby because I have been a recipient of so much inner healing from God and I want you to be as well so start asking